Ever wonder why your keyboard looks like this and not like this? The answer has a lot to do with this. Cordy's creators never typed out exactly what they were thinking. And although not everyone agrees, this is why most experts believe the keyboard is laid out the way it is. The first typewriters had keyboards of all shapes and sizes, but inventors soon learned they needed to stagger the keys to stop them from getting stuck together. In 1867, newspaper editor Christopher Latham Scholes was working on one early version. His first keyboard had the second half of the alphabet on top and the first half on the bottom, but the keys were still getting jammed. Ugh. Letters often used consecutively would get stuck together if they were next to each other on the keyboard, so he devised a new layout, separating the most common pairings of letters. Early typewriters left out the one and zero keys. People used lowercase l's and capital o's instead. A few years later, E. Remington & Sons, a weapons manufacturer, was looking for a new way to rake in some cash after the end of the Civil War. So, they turned from rifles to typewriters. Remington entered into an agreement with Scholes and switched up the layout just a bit. They swapped the R and period, leaving QWERTY. Slowly, keyboard manufacturers began adding the one and zero keys, but it didn't become standardized until roughly 100 years later in the 1970s. Today's keyboards have that same staggered layout, even though the technical limitations of the typewriter are long behind us. Clearly, we're no longer concerned with getting keys stuck together, but QWERTY stuck around. <laughs>